were driving into, into Homs, and uh, we got to uh, this Zahra neighborhood, right? So you think, my God, we're going right into the epicenter. We're going right into the eye of this hurricane. And first of all, you begin to see that the, uh, the streets are kind of deserted. There's not a whole lot of people in the streets. And then when we got, we got closer in, into the heart of this neighborhood, we see a demonstration, and it's 400, 500 uh, people. And we get close, and, you know, we say, oh, gee, should we get out of the bus? And, yes, we should get out of the bus. So we get out of the bus, and we get down on street level. And, first of all, the main point of this demonstration is nothing to do with, with party politics, per se, but it's a demand for heating oil, for fuel oil. Uh, it can get pretty cold in Syria. Let me, let me tell you, it can be really cold, and it can go from warm to cold relatively quickly. Um, that's, that has happened to me. So what these people were demanding is they want more fuel oil to be available at reasonable prices. And the method of the, of the demonstration, which we thought originally would have been, you know, anti-Assad, was to line up these plastic uh, containers, right? They're about the size of a, of a sort of small to medium suitcase. And they lined up about 100 of them, and I have some shots of this. So they got these containers that are supposed to contain fuel oil, and they lined them up. And they're protesting that the governor of the uh, province uh, has not done enough to make this stuff available. And, and then, then, then the question becomes, are these people pro-Assad or anti-Assad? And they're, they're militantly, aggressively pro-Assad. <laughs> and uh, not only that, they have pictures of Assad, uh, generally Bashar, but also uh, the, the father, right, um, uh, Hafez, and these are, these are not the sort of prefabricated portraits that the government gives people when it's time to have a, 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 you know, a thoroughly organized demonstration. Instead, what it is is they, they, they were, you know, these are pictures out of magazines and stuff like this. So people were holding this up, and they were chanting slogans in favor of Assad. Uh, and we talked to these people for a while, and then we got to the hospital. And this, I think, is really interesting. The hospital in this critical area of Zakra, in, uh, in, uh, in Homs, right, the center of the, of, of the, of the fighting. Now, this then, the picture turns, turns tragic, because talking to nurses, women nurses, male nurses, a couple of MDs, doctors, one, I think, a, a, well, I don't know what his specialty was, another was an, an anesthesiologist. And what they, what they were saying is that uh, for quite a while now, there's been a steady stream of people coming in there killed. Uh, the day we were there, Tuesday, seven wounded and five dead on that one day. And one member of the Syrian army had been killed by five people. So let me continue in just a second. We'll be right back to the uh, eyewitness first person report from Syria. And then we're right in the middle of the first trip to Hong by any group of foreign journalists here on World Crisis Radio. Back in a minute. Welcome back to World Crisis Radio. So reporting tonight from, uh, from Beirut, Lebanon. And let me tell you where I'm reporting from. I'm at the St. Michael's Foundation. That is La Fondation Saint-Michel, which is a, uh, a center. It's a charity, foundation, philanthropic organization, generally uh, close to the Catholic Church. And it deals with uh, children who have special problems, and they offer children a dispensary and a school and uh, basically seamless uh, service. We can tell you a couple of things more about this. We'll get a couple of key words for this in, uh, in the course of what we're doing. But let's, let's go back now to Homs on Tuesday. So here we are now. We're in the hospital. We've seen this demonstration. The demonstration is that people want fuel oil. And they're pro-Assad. They're militantly pro-Assad. Uh, they're shouting slogans for Assad. They're showing Assad's picture. This is just reality. This is what I saw. And it's not what I expected to see. I really didn't think it would be quite this, uh, this strong. And you, this is stuff you cannot fake, because these were real people, right? I was basically rubbing elbows, right? I was in the, in the crowd with them. Um, so then we go to this hospital. And at the hospital... We're told that there's a steady stream of killed and wounded. The day we, the day we were there, seven wounded and five dead. So we were there probably seven, seven thirty, eight o'clock in the evening. 
Seven wounded, five dead that day. In particular, one one case stood out that five terrorist shooters had killed one soldier. And we were told by the doctors that they got a, they got a daily death toll of five to six. And then on some days, however, the snipers absolutely go wild. And one day they, they got 80 victims, I think, killed and, and wounded. Uh, when does this stuff happen? Uh, it seems to happen uh, at various times. We're told that Friday, because of the Friday prayers, right, the typical Muslim holiday, Friday is a big day for these snipers. And uh, the, uh, the, there are certain times of day, right? In the morning when parents are taking their children to school, so 9 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, or more or less where the school gets out, and then late in the evening, something like 10 or 11 o'clock. So you've got to imagine that you're a trained anesthesiologist or a, a specialist or general practitioner, and you're working in this hospital, as I talked to a couple of people, and they say, well, now i got to go home, and my big problem to get home from work is that I'm concerned that, uh, that somebody's going to shoot me, a sniper. Now, what was the demand that these people had? Uh, they, they want the killing to end. And specifically the demand they want is they want more of the Syrian army, not less, but more. They want a firmer line by the Assad government. And what one woman said in particular, she said, I want the Syrian army on every rooftop here in the Zakra area of, of Damascus because that will stop them from shooting us. And they, they, you know, they're full of hatred for these people, right? the shooters, people dressed in black, people wearing black hoods uh, and so forth, uh, complete contempt for them. And the main thing is, where's the Syrian army when we need them? Uh, and there's a, there's a complex story about this. We try to analyze this a little bit. Right? That the, the Assad government at the beginning had put out an order saying that there should not be shooting at civilian demonstrators. Um, and and some, people, some military units were chopped to pieces, uh, and they were still faithful to that order. In other words, they, they followed their orders, even if it meant taking very significant casualties when they came under fire. So that's the, uh, that's the, the, the harm story. Now, with this, of course, uh, the entire Anglo-American presentation of the Syrian crisis is reduced to an absurdity. It, it just falls to the ground. It, it doesn't, doesn't exist, because this is now Homs, the, the great city, right? This is the, the, the place where it's all supposed to be happening. 